everyone, welcome on in. This is our broadcasting class for Louisiana College as uh, everybody has been now shifted over to doing things online and this class we do some radio segments and some other things that we we're working on but uh, this portion of the semester we're just going to talk a little bit about what the students have been going through from the time that Louisiana College shut down at least having in-person classes which was after March 13th until here we are today on April 21st. So let me just open it up by asking, first of all, how you guys have been doing? How has it been going so far, kind of matriculating over to this new way of, of doing college? Well, I guess I'll go first. Um, It's been good since everything's got out. My sleep schedule's been completely backwards, uh, as you all know. I, I pretty much do all my work late afternoon till five in the morning now. But that being said, I get to work at my own pace and things are going good. Uh, it It's really weird staying inside all the time, but just trying to get outside whenever possible has been really good and really necessary, uh, especially when it comes to focusing on schoolwork. If I find if I just stay inside all day, then I have a really hard time staying focused and buckling down. But if I go outside and get the jitters out and come back in, I'm good. <laughs> How about some of you other ones? Uh, it's been a struggle, I won't lie, uh, to get motivation, number one, to do things. And, um, you know, it's same thing with the sleep schedule. I'm not as late into the afternoon as Clark is, but um, kind of, you know, you have your moments, your days, uh, especially when you find yourself kind of sticking with the college schedule where you stay up too late to do homework and then kind of have a hard time getting going in the morning. Um, aside from that, though, the weather has been really nice lately, so it has, I think, uh, the online learning given us a different opportunity to kind of be outside more, which has been nice, um, instead of just sitting in the classroom all day. All right, let's hear from Joel or Daryl. Well, with me, I actually just got out of quarantine yesterday. What? Yeah. What? I was, uh... Two weeks ago on a Sunday, I had to go to the hospital, and turns out it was because of high blood sugar and uh, dehydration. So they had me in quarantine in WSA for two weeks. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So they had to, had to bring me food to my door and... I only left out one time and had to get enough food for a full two weeks. Wow. And <clears throat> I left yesterday morning, start packing. I started packing up at like 6.15 that, that morning. And then I, I packed up my whole dorm and I came home yesterday. Wow. Thank goodness. That, is, that definitely is the story of the night so well, yeah. better. You were feeling better, right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling good. So, <laughs> other than that, it was pretty good. Okay. And Joel? Well, I'm not sure I can follow that up fully, but mostly for me, it's just been struggling to make sure all of my schoolwork stays, you know, within my the realm that I'm thinking of because it's kind of difficult to keep track of it all when you're not in, at school, actually. So I guess that's been primarily my struggle. But um, other than that, it's actually not been too bad. Um, I've had, didn't have, I haven't had a lot of uh, problems getting the schoolwork done. So. Okay, good. Now, I was remiss. I should have let you guys each introduce yourselves and where we're talking to you from. So let's go ahead. and Joel, uh, introduce yourself and tell us where you're, at, where you're located. My name is Joel Thompson. I am a sophomore journalism major, finishing up my sophomore year, and I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana. All right, Daryl. My name is Daryl Brown. I'm currently in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I am a senior with three semesters left of sports media major. Awesome. Lena. 
My name is Alina Noakes. I'm in Prospect, Louisiana, uh, just outside of Tioga, and uh, I'm a sophomore journalism major. And Clark. Hey, I am Jerry Clark, and I'm reporting you, to you from Oxford, Mississippi. I'm a senior journalism major. So this, is, again, is the class that we've been looking at broadcasting all semester. As I said earlier, we, we did some segments on radio, and we're just getting ready to get into the video portion of the class when the COVID-19 pandemic really kind of hit here in Louisiana and the state uh, was put on the state home order. And so as a result, we've been doing this class online, which has proven to be somewhat challenging given the nature of the curriculum, but we've been pressing on. Let me ask you guys this. What do you feel has been the biggest challenge or the toughest adjustment to doing classes online versus doing them in person, at least how you've been experiencing it? Instruction for me personally, because like with the assignment that uh, Dr. Christian gives us, I don't have that that one-on-one -on -one time with her to go into extra detail about what needs to be fixed and things like that. So that's, that's the hardest part. Other than that, I would say everything seems a little bit easier because we're so stuck inside that we can get work done quicker depending on the person. Gotcha. Mm. Um, I personally find it a good bit harder to to do the classes online. I definitely was not meant to do them online. Um, a lot of my classes, though, uh, have are kind of instructional based. Kind of uh, in class is always easier for um, teachers to teach you things um, and for you to understand it. And personally, that's just the way I learn best, anyway. Uh, so, and I also think that a lot of teachers have been, and maybe not intentionally doing it, but have been uh, compensating the lack of instructional time in class with more work and not realizing that, you know, some other classes that actually have to find a way to um, supplement the workload and do it online um, with more instruction, I guess, that wouldn't necessarily be how we would normally do it. Um, and so it's just been a lot more work than I anticipated that it would be to get it done, you know, in a 24 hour day, on a normal schedule. It's just not been possible. And if I can say, Alina is a very top notch student. So it's interesting to hear your perspective on that, given that what a great student that, that you really are. Uh, I'm glad someone notices it at least. And it's not just <laughs> me being you know, crazy. <laughs> But how about you guys, Jerry or Joel? Shoot, well, the hardest part for me is really just structure. Um, and I, I never really got used to using Portal. Um, it was always kind of confusing to me. And uh, now I've definitely got it figured out. But <laughs> that, <laughs> that did kind of set me back a little bit at first. Uh, I got ahead. I, got, I, I was able to work a far, like really far ahead in one of my classes. But – because of that, I forgot about the class and then realized a week later, I'm really far behind in that class. So I just spent a whole two days straight doing all the work. But I mean, I don't know. I like doing that though. I, I like being able to work at my own pace and uh, being able to sit down and, and do things when I want to do them and knock them out. But that's really just been the toughest part for me is the just lack of structure, but it has its pros and cons for me. But also like we were getting into the video portion of this class like i do wish we could get out there and get packages and because i have grown from doing our radio packages each time that we did them and got feedback and i would love to be able to do that with video but uh i mean I, i've still managed to stay busy editing my own projects and things but still having a school curriculum and someone there to guide us through the process and give us feedback. That's something that we can't quite get the same way online that I think is necessary and that we miss out on, but you know, we'll make do. Yeah. Joel. 
I'll agree with what Daryl said at the beginning about instruction. Um, some professors are a little bit better than others at conveying exactly what it is that they want you to do for a specific project. I'll also say that workload might be um, one aspect of it because it seems like in a lot of our classes it's increased a lot because you know, you're trying to make up for the lost class time and so that can sometimes be a little bit annoying if you're a college student because it seems like I'm having to engage a lot more in you know things like forum posts or things of that nature that are a little bit you know aggravating but I understand you know the purpose behind them it's just that's one of the things that's sort of changed about the way these courses are being handled that's something that we're having to adjust to. Yeah absolutely and I can tell you from an instructor standpoint that I also really miss more the interpersonal Mm -hmm. communication and being in person with you guys because I always have felt like that's more where my teaching skills would translate um, and you know the unique content that this class had particularly was better in person for sure as well so I think it's you know in that respect it's been disappointing for all of us but yet we're pushing through to try to see how we can do things differently mm -hmm. you know and, and and to be honest, I think even for us, I'm the news director at KLB in Alexandria, you know, a lot of our reporters have had to experience that as well. We only have a handful of people working in the building each day. Most of our reporters are out in the field now and editing packages from their house and doing interviews just like this, using Zoom and other platforms. If they do go out having to wear the masks or just, you know, practicing social distancing and we even built some some boom poles for them to put their mics on the end so that they're not having to get close to people. It's just a, a different, different world. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. I mean, you know, you're all in kind of that age group of 18 to 22 for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. What's this whole experience been like going through this um, just as people uh, to see what our country is going through, to see what our state is going through and how this is affecting each of you personally? Uh, personally, I think that as a college student, we, we have, um, it seems like we've gotten kind of lost <laughs> in the shuffle of things. Uh, you know, for instance, a lot of people have been getting pretty frustrated with the stimulus checks and it's really um, made me even more grateful for the situation I'm in being so close to home from LC and still uh, living with my parents when I'm not living on campus and being, you know, only 20 um, as a sophomore in college. Uh, I have a job, but it's not super necessary right now. It's not like, um, I, you know, I pay for most of my things, but uh, living with my parents has its perks as well uh, for support. But um, I think that other college students are not in the same position. A lot of times, you know, they go off and uh, they go to college someplace else and they don't really expect to ever return home um, or to have, some people don't have that family support system. And most of the time, college students do go and get full-time jobs, but, you know, we can pretty much, you know, they're not salaried workers, so they probably got cut within the first round if they did have a job um, that was, you know, one of those non-essential places to be open. So, uh, to me, it's made me a lot more, I guess, aware of the things that I do have, and uh, also just made my heartbreak even more over um, the situations that a lot of college, college students are in, a lot of my friends that are in um, the same, those positions right now. So I would say I'm just definitely more grateful than ever. Good thoughts. Guys? I've learned that people don't like to listen. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? people keep going out <coughs> and not staying home. And I've learned that our government would rather not do the hardest thing, which is the, e would we'll, we'll not do the easiest thing, which is also the hardest decision, which is to me personally, would be just shutting everything down for about two weeks three weeks to actually flatten the curve then to keep this going on to like some news articles are saying potentially 2022 I would rather 
stay home for two weeks and then let everything get better versus wait two years and possibly not even step on campus, possibly not even have sports, possibly have to push back my graduation date by two, three years just because they don't want to, just because they the government still wants to make money. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's, sorry, go ahead. Oh, um, I think that's kind of a hard, you know, line to balance, though, like, uh, the government's having to make some tough decisions for sure. And I think they should have probably had a plan kind of in place for if something like this was to happen, you know, it's not completely unexpected, although this is the most bizarre thing that even my parents have ever seen in their lifetimes. Uh, but, you know, we should have probably been in a better place than we are now. And had a temporary plan, if anything, like we have seen in other countries. But at the same time, I think that um, America is a different makeup of people than a lot of countries. Um, you know, there's the protests going on right now for people going back to work and, you know, saying it's their right to work and they have the freedom to do that. But I think what's most shocking to me is just how, yes, you have the right to, to do that and that's to protest at least. Um, but how selfish people can be in this in this nation, especially the ones um, who are calling, you know, who have called themselves Christians and, you know, say they believe in science, say they even believe in a virus, but doing that um, because it's their personal freedom, their personal right. And um, just makes me think of how, you know, your, your freedoms come with sacrifice and a lot of people just aren't willing to make a very temporary sacrifice for the sake of everyone else's freedom as well. So, I think the longer this goes on, the more we'll find ourselves in a tougher position. And that's when things, you know, the rubber will really, really hit the road um, and we'll see even more um, severe consequences to not, you know, heeding the warnings of healthcare officials and uh, even the government in some situations. So I do agree with you, Daryl. It's, um, they could be probably doing more. Don't really know what they could be doing. I'm not an expert on that kind of stuff, but they probably could be doing more. Well, I know in Georgia that their curfew is at nine o'clock. And if the police catch you on the streets after curfew, you will get fined thousands of dollars. And I know Louisiana is not doing that. There are several parishes in Louisiana that are doing that. Uh, there's yeah. one in Acadiana that's doing that for Million Parish. I have Defining? a friend that I know this, but mm -hmm. you're right. The whole state is not doing that. And it'd probably be a better idea if they did. You know, yeah. we're kind of getting into that territory of the political aspects of this. Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. You know, both nationally and even within the state of Louisiana. You know, look at Louisiana, for example, and the majority of cases are happening in the New Orleans area, some more oh, yeah. happening in the Baton Rouge area, and then you have kind of the Shreveport area. Outside of that, and especially here in central Louisiana, you know, the cases have been pretty tepid so far. Um, you know, so it's it's tough to kind of put a one size fits all approach to this. Yeah. Which I think maybe some of the medical experts would would go with. And then you have the political aspects where people are losing their businesses. They're running out of money. Yeah. They might be losing their jobs if this goes much longer. That's a very fearful sensation if you're in that situation. And so you can kind of understand where people are like, hey, it's not happening here. You know, yeah. let us go back to what we love to do. So it's tough, it's tough for sure. Yeah. I think there needs to be a humanitarian approach to both sides of the of the aisle maybe not political but just of this mindset of how this virus really is affecting people uh you know a lot of people are scared on both sides and they should be and a lot of people find that their financial security is you know their it is their livelihood and if they don't have that financial security you know what are they supposed to do and other people see it as you won't have financial security if you if you don't have a life or um you know if we're not in a healthy state as a nation. So uh, I think that there needs definitely to be a more 
humanitarian approach to both sides and not not be overly critical of each other. Um, that's where it gets dangerous. Yeah, we've been in a political environment for so long now where people you know, kind of yell at each other. And this might be the one time where we need to stop, slow down, and just start talking to each other again. Yep. Here's something I want to ask you guys about. Um, you know, and the subject close to my heart because I work at a television station. I actually anchor the news. I've been seeing a lot of studies that say that not only is, is television news viewership numbers, they're way up locally, especially as well, but those numbers are up among younger people as well. So I'm curious, what kind of news consumption have you guys been doing through this and how have you found it relates to the class and how you how have you find it relates to what you might want to do career wise well for me i've I've been consuming most of my news uh the way I normally do by reading uh you know I don't have t v but one of the interesting things about it is um seeing all the new in different ways that journalists are having to work to get their stories out throughout the different social distancing measures and restrictions and work from home and everything. Um, <clears throat> like at the white house briefings, everybody has to be six feet apart and <laughs> it's been very interesting. But one of the cool things about it is checking in every day to see the live uh, online briefings from the white house. I don't know if that's ever been done before, but that's, I mean, I'm surely seeing that for the first time. Um, and I've been checking things every single day just to say, stay on top of things, see what the numbers are, where things are going and kind of just keep my thumb on everything. Uh, but as far as career wise, it really shows me that like, even under an extreme situation, we have the tools to be able to do so much. Uh, I mean, just Zoom that we're on right now is so nice. I've never used it before. And it is so cool how it switches when everybody talks. Like, that is nice. There's just – it. there's so much we can do. And seeing people doing it professionally and do it well really sets the bar high for what can be done. And I've been learning a lot from it. Uh, and it's been pushing me to think harder about how we do these things and how we use what tools we have. So. I don't know if that answers that question. Definitely does. Yeah. I try. Well, the rest of you. <laughs> um, I've been consuming the news like I normally do um, through Associated Press. <laughs> <It's> my, <laughs> my app goes off all the time. You know, there's news stories all the time. So I've been reading a lot and trying to figure out, um, you know, since we can't see each other, I think broadcast is a bit different because uh, we do these, you know, video calls and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, you kind of take your clips from that and compile it into one package. And uh, that kind of scares me. I've, especially having watched the um, instructional videos you sent us a couple, uh, I guess it was last week. Um, I watched a bunch of those to, and one of them in particular was the day of uh, a reporter and kind of she like lost the audio from a source and had to pick up another one. Luckily, she did that and got it in right on time and then had to switch it back around to do another package to get in for the nightly news. And that just kind of terrifies me. And uh, I guess more um, practice through this class would probably encourage me a good bit. But uh, since we don't have that, I don't know how comfortable I would have been doing that, say, if we had to do that for this class right now. But um, kind of put things into perspective about how much work really goes into um, a nightly newscast, I guess, if you're having to get a bunch of packages in. And uh, also I'm more grateful for, for you know, just because, you know, always can call your source, you know, record it, uh, and then write your story. It's um, a lot easier, but I also like the fact that um, you're kind of not limited in a print story to just news. Um, there's a lot of, you know, the opinion, the op-eds and stuff have been very interesting to me during this time. So I really, I guess, like that part of the news, especially in this time. <laughs> All right, Daryl or Joel? I've been getting most of my news 
uh, like articles from Facebook, but I read the most interesting ones. Uh, but the main news I the main news I usually watch is the sports news, like uh, like Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp on the Spewed, and I see how they're doing their show from their from their homes and how uh, Colin Cowherd is doing the same thing and how uh, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson are doing their podcast from home. And I see how they're like, how they're being very interactive, even though there's not much in the sports world going on, they still have things to talk about and they're still finding a way to put on the show. Cause, uh, I think the the first the first week, uh, Skip and Shannon did Undisputed from home. They went into they did it at Skip's house at his table in his living room, literally about six or twelve feet away from each other, mm-hmm. and then it worked, but it didn't work. So then they just started doing it from each other's homes and it worked out even better, even adding their host, Molly, into the into the mix. So it just it shows me that no matter what's going on, if you're determined about your craft, you're gonna do as much as you can and find whatever you can to talk about and keep your audience interested. Because Without sports right now, a lot of people are, well, I'll I'll say some people are really bored out their minds. And I'm really hoping for, I've been saying, I'm really hoping for football season. (laughs) I think you're not alone in that. (laughs) Joe, how about your thoughts? Yeah, I typically also get a lot of my news from the Associated Press. And um, also I've been uh, watching a lot of local news as well because I think that in this type of pandemic, it's very important that we pay attention to a lot of local sources as well, because that's also very important because a lot of this is gonna be based around how each community is gonna handle the situation and how the state government is handling the situation. I'll also be honest, I've become a little worn with a lot of the uh, coronavirus coverage. So I haven't probably kept up with it as closely the last several weeks. A lot of it is just a lot of the same kind of stuff, you know, the the increasing death rate and the increasing mortality rate and things like that. And otherwise, I have just been sort of trying to keep my mind focused on other things, keep my mind focused on the closing semester lately. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with Joel. Yeah, it's been hard to keep up with the news sometimes just because it seems like a lot of it is uh, the mm-hmm. same uh, almost just too scary to keep up with sometimes too because the numbers do keep rising in areas so um, I also find that it is harder to write those print stories and to do broadcast coverage you kind of run out of or you feel like you might run out of stories sometimes um, I know for sure when I wrote uh, the I wrote an op-ed and a hard news article for a Wildcats media a couple weeks back and I was fully intent on writing more, writing, writing into a series, but uh, I just couldn't find, it might've been time part of it. And then, uh, but feel like I could find a good angle on the story besides the fact that the numbers kept rising. Uh, I can see where as a local news reporter, it would be for sure harder to, to figure out how to report the news in a new way to your um, audience and still have that same impact Um, that you hope it will have. And that's definitely been the challenge I think that our reporters have faced and some have even kind of expressed to me that you know it's just getting harder to just I mean they've been reporting on this for six or seven weeks now almost every day and occasionally we'll we'll get something that's a little bit out of that but at the same time there are still those stories that are coming at us every day that have maybe a little bit unique angle. And one thing we really try to focus on now more are stories of people who recover, um, people who are doing unsung hero type job, like the people in hospitals, besides the nurses and doctors. We had that story tonight on our newscasts. Um, but the daily numbers of 
here's how many cases we have in Louisiana, here are how many deaths we now have. And people are asking us, you know, why can't you show us how many people have recovered? And the state doesn't actually provide those numbers, so we can't really just, you know, make them up. Um, I've tried to even kind of put perspective into my stories of when you look at the total number of tests, then the total number of cases that they have uh, detected versus then the number of people who have died and the number of people who are in the hospital, it's still a really large number of people who don't fall into those two categories. And so, you know, while we've seen about 14 people in Louisiana having died from it at this point here on April 21st, um, you know, the, the good news, I guess, is that both for Louisiana and even nationally, what they projected with those models early on has been ended up being way off, thankfully. Um, and so not as many people are going to die as they predicted, but still, in the end, a, a large number. So, you know, mm -hmm. Clark had mentioned earlier, you know, having a president, you know, come out every day and do those news conferences. He's been doing that for like six or seven weeks, two hours every day. Mm -hmm. To me, that's unprecedented. I can't ever remember any president talking for that much time every day, um, you know, on a particular topic. But not only him, his team as well, they've had a lot to say, especially Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks, who've really become national figures now, you know, who would have thunk it two months ago. So it, it really is kind of unprecedented. Let me kind of wrap things up here by just asking you guys, what do you feel like you miss the most? And what are you looking forward to getting back the most if you had to kind of boil it down to one thing? Photography. Really? Okay. How so? Like I miss, uh, I miss doing the games, getting the action shots, <laughs> interact, like just interacting with the players and the people and, uh, I just like just seeing the com camaraderie with everybody. Like, I'm sad that not sad, but upset that a lot of people couldn't finish their seasons because of this. And it's not fair, but at the same time, it was necessary for the health of everybody. And it it hurts some it hurts some students in our field, especially if they were seniors and they didn't get enough footage. So that's like the main thing I miss because it's the it was my first semester doing it and I really enjoyed it. Mm. I miss just the freedom to go out and do things and be around people and not have to worry about all of the all of this. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot to think about and a lot to worry about. And I used to take a lot of things for granted, like being able to go out and get lunch with people and uh, hang out with more than one person at a time and. Uh, social interaction I, I just used to take that for granted so much and now that we don't have that it's made me really reflect and appreciate um the times that I did have that and also be able to tell that I've taken it for granted so when all of this is over I just can't wait to be able to be around people and to be out and to be able to go do things and like I, I miss I really I just got a brand new camera and I want to play with it so bad I've been videoing all the junk in this house for so long. <laughs> There's only so many ways you can film a lamp. But, you know, I, I would like to be able to go shoot a video, but I can't get a crew together or just people to come do it. So it's just a lot of waiting and thinking and reflecting, and I'm just going to look forward. I'm looking forward to all the things that were normal that we'll get to experience again when this is over. on the same page as both Daryl and Clark. Um, I would really miss photography and especially sports photography, same as Daryl. I had just gotten um, a new, my new gear. I had a new camera and a brand new sports photography lens. So I was super excited to get on the field. And uh, I literally got it in the week that they canceled the first set of games um, for baseball. And then 
they canceled the season. And so super disappointed, um, but I've used it for um, probably not the purpose of what it was supposed to be used for with some portraits of family and stuff, but it has done the job. So it's been nice to, to play around with that. And then, um, so I really am looking forward to kind of getting around more people and doing that environmental photography and sports photography. Um, but most thing, the thing I miss the most is um, a church family for sure. I just miss that, you know, friendship and community there. It's been super tough to watch sermons online um, and to, I guess, feel motivated sometimes to get up in the morning and watch them when you're not going to be surrounded by people. But um, it's been uh, super sad to not be in that community of people and not have that. Uh, support in the same way that you have when you're when you're with the body believers in the church so uh, I really am looking forward to getting back together with them Joel yeah as the only uh, non-photographer in this group I guess the <laughs> thing that I uh, miss the most is being able to travel not even just like long distance travel just being able to drive around locally is one of my favorite activities I love being able to see all the nooks and crannies around our state, the different small towns. That was something that I spent a lot of time doing. Uh, also just getting to interact with people uh, day to day, being able to see people in person, being able to see all my friends at school, being able to see people around here in Lafayette. Uh, it's just a difficult transition, not being able to do much outside of your own home, just outside of maybe the occasionally going to pick something up from the store. It's kind of a rough transition that we're all having to go through, but hopefully we'll be able to get through it soon. Well, probably years from now, many of you will be in a situation where you'll either have kids or maybe you'll be working with young adults. You know, maybe some of you will be professors or instructors at a college yourself, school teachers, and you'll be able to share the story with them of, of all of this and help, help them through it. I'm with Alina. If there's probably one thing I really miss more than anything right now, it's just church. You know, being able to get up on Sunday and, and go and worship with God's people because that's just such a privilege that we've had inter uninterrupted in America for years and years and years. And, you know, I think most churches have chosen to follow the, the order states in this case uh, as a way to help. It's a positive testimony um, with that as well. So. But more than that, too, I miss all you guys and miss being able to finish up the semester and, and do things the right way that, that we were on the track that we were on. So mm -hmm. and we'll figure out a way to kind of make some of that up, you know, once we're all back on campus, whenever that might be. Mm -hmm. I can encourage you with one last thing. It's take some of the thoughts that you've had and expressed and just do it, even if it's not for class or for credit, but, you know, Take something even like Zoom and just practice yourself and pull a few things that you can post to Wildcats Media or, or just anything like that and, and you know, channel that creative um, journalistic energy that you have in a way that maybe you haven't thought about before and you know, just finish strong once you're done with your finals and everything, even over the summer. You know, why not? Mm -hmm. um, so, all right, Alina, Joel, Daryl. And Jerry, I really enjoyed having you guys in class this semester and hopefully mm -hmm. this is a a good way for us to wrap up our semester. I think so. Definitely. <laughs>